we started the structure cleaning on a new room and we're always going to start with the ceiling first. Um, I have my wall wash pull I've already done with a wall wash at 99 solution. I'm going to usually do a certain pattern. I need to mark that on a fire that has actual soot on the walls. I'm going to actually see the line clear. I almost prefer that because weird as that sounds. But for now, what I'm going to do is give myself visual markers inside the room. So with the ceiling starting up here, I'm going to come back to this wall sconce here. And then I'm going to take that across the room. And then I'll put down my wash and come back with the rinse. So we we'll start up high in the corner. Bring it back to the wall sconce. Making sure to overlap my lines. And then I'm going to do probably a three, three wide pattern with my wall wash before I take it down and rinse that head off. So these pools are awesome in high situations. And I appreciate that you can just pop this off to go and rinse it off. Yep, so we've got these split buckets that fit these wall wash heads in. I'm going to keep my poles separated here with a wall wash and my rinse. This actually has a deodorizer in it as well, so I'm deodorizing and cleaning at the same time. And then coming back over with clean water, warm water rinse. When I'm doing a room like this, I'm going to just do just the wall wash poles while I, at the beginning. Come back after I'm done with all that. I'm going to come back with my microfibers, clean my fixtures, clean my trim, clean my windows, light switch covers. What will happen is these is the material on these heads are going to smear on like a gloss surface like that. So I come back with the microfiber, make sure I don't leave any streaks, and make sure there's no lint or dust being left behind. And I usually overlap about half of my of the head of my pole there on each line, just to make sure I'm getting really thorough, clean, and nothing is going to get missed. So as you can see, I've now balanced out. It's hard to see the water marks probably on the video, but I now have an even line on the last about four feet of this room. I'm going to put down my wash pole now. I'm going to switch over to the rinse before that dries up, make sure that I can still see that line and I don't miss anything on the red side. And again, this rinse is just going to be straight water and what we're doing is making sure that we're not leaving any uh, tacky or sticky residue on that wall once we're done. So when you come in, it's just going to be a nice, clean, normal wall again. And then I like to use my rinse. I'm going to do the exact same pattern that I just did with my block. And clean the exact same sections each way. Again, that is just a way to make sure that you get a nice even clean and no spots are missed. Now your rinse, you're going to be able to go a little bit further than your wash. Most of the residue in particular is already off, so you're going to be able to do a couple extra rows as far as widths of this on the surface that you're cleaning, because you're not pulling as much particulate off. You can run a room with a wash and rinse 
with a two-man team. One guy is going to do the watch ahead of the guy doing the rinsing. Or if you're just running a small crew with a cleaning place, sometimes just one guy is doing wash, then rinse, just like I'm showing you here. So that's my first section done. I'm basically going to split this up into thirds and I'm going to clear on the other side of my chandelier with a wash then rinse and I'll do the last section on my way out. Okay, so completed the ceiling already and now I'm going to start on the walls. Um, and I know this will kind of seem backwards to some people, but we're actually going to clean from the bottom up. And the reason for that is it's going to minimize any potential for uh, solution streaking. So if you're starting high and you get a run of solution coming down that wall, sometimes it's going to leave a streak there that's going to be really, really hard to get out. And we're just going to make sure that we mitigate that and make sure that's not a risk. Um, when I start at the base, I'm going to start about an inch above the base trim and I'm going to come back with my microfiber and catch those. And I like to do a dry one first because it's going to be the most amount of dust in the room because that's our horizontal surface down there. If you catch that with your wall wash head, it's going to drag it up the wall. So I'm going to stay off that base trim, come back with my microfiber after I finish the walls in the room. So we'll start here at the bottom, bring it up. And I basically do one swipe about nose height so that I know where I'm at with that. And I'm going to run that all the way across the wall. Then I'm going to rinse afterwards. So as I'm going, I'm going to go around any of my fixtures. The base trim, plastic, any fixtures on the wall. This is going to leave streaking on it because it's going to be a really smooth, shiny surface. So I'm going to get around it on the wall surface itself. And then I'm going to come back and I'll wipe those down with my microfiber towel when I come back. Around. Now this isn't a highly contaminated job, so the main part is just going to be to make sure you remember where you stopped with your solution and overlap your lines as you're going. And I'm going to do about nose height and about four foot section, then I'm going to come back with my rinse. I also change my solution between the ceiling and the walls just to make sure that I'm not spreading contamination around, keep my water good and clean. It's really important to have your rinse water clean because that's the one that's going to be that final clean. You want to make sure that it's really pristine, okay? hard to see in the video, but I'm basically I can catch the gloss of that water versus the wet wall versus the dry wall. And that's how I'm kind of keeping my lines all in order, okay? So I've already done my ceiling walls now. I'm moving to the fixtures and the stuff that I'm going to use my microfiber towels for. Um, one of those is going to be the base trim. Um, I spoke earlier about that. That is like a horizontal surface in here, so it's going to attract a lot more of the dust and particulate than our wall surfaces are. The one trick that I like to do is take my dry microfiber and I essentially uh, will do a pre-dusting before I actually use my solution on it. Um, that's just if we're dealing with something that has like a high cobweb and like actual just dust before that had nothing to do with the loss. So I'm actually going to brush and wipe that down before as like my first step of the cleaning process. So once I've dusted that, I've got my two towels here. I've got a cleaning and a rinse one, and I've also got my Q-tips, because that is the most important part. So before my first step here, I've got my deodorized and cleaning solution. And I'm gonna do my best to get my thumb in to those grooves along this as I work way work my way down this. 
but some of those 90 degree angles are just not gonna, your thumb and finger are not gonna cut it. So we're gonna come back over those with our Q-tips. So I've dipped these already in my deodorizing solution and I like to take a couple of them together and I'll get them right in top of that, that groove up against the wall. And you can see even after wiping that with the microfiber, I'm still gonna collect quite a bit of particulate off of there, okay? So I'm gonna continue to do that. Still have a little bit of dust left on that second round. I'm just gonna continue to do that until I've got that clean. And you will find some trim, if it's painted, it should eventually stop bringing off a particulate or a dirt mark on your Q-tips. Some wood trim is still going to transfer, some of the stain is going to rub off on that, so there's going to be a certain point where you're going to have to determine uh, whether that's still particulate or the actual wood grain and, and stain coming off. So that's clean now. I'm going to switch over to my rinse microfiber and rinse off so I don't have any residue left. And we've got a nice clean section of our base trim. So I'm gonna do that through the whole perimeter of the room now. This is the final step that I'm gonna do after I've got everything else cleaned down to the bottom. While I'm going around the room with my base trim, I've still got my deodorized and rinse rag. That's when I'm gonna hit my outlet covers, my switch covers, my light fixtures and things like that. It's kind of the final step and really 100% in the room. And I'm gonna get on top of that with my thumb there. Get on the edge there. And I always like to do a good quality check on myself just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. I'm gonna run my Q-tip across the top. This is also gonna be a good one if you're finding that there's a lot of uh, soot and particulate that's been put, pressed in there, which we're just catching a little tiny bit of dust. You can barely even see that. Um, that's gonna tell me if I'm catching a lot there. It might be something where I need to take that off and look in back there and determine whether there's more that needs to be done in that process.